All right, let's briefly talk about users because they are really important to every application that you build. As I mentioned, with every Bubble app that you build, you automatically have the user data type included, okay? And the user data type will automatically have this email field as well, which other data types do not have, okay? And that's a reflection of the fact that you know, email signups is the way that you associate a user with, you know, some other digital identity outside of your application ecosystem. So email dominates our world. That's why every user needs to have an email. So how do you actually sign up users? I showed you this header before, which has this sign up login pop up in it. So this is actually its own reusable element. So what you're seeing here is the reusable element header, which itself has a reusable element inside of it. So reusable element exception, some might say. I can go over to the reusable element sign up login pop up to see how it works. And you can see it already has some inputs there for us. And if we jump into the workflow tab, I'm not going to mess with this. I'm also, there's no point us creating our own sign up login pop up since it's just going to mimic the same functionality here. But of course, you know, at some point in your bubble journey, more than likely, you are going to want to customize this pop up or create your entirely new sign up login flow. Maybe it's not even going to be in a pop up. And a pop up, by the way, is just another type of container here. And it's always triggered by that show action. All right, this show element action. That's how you show a pop up. So within our sign up login pop up, we have this workflow that fires when the button sign up is clicked. Okay. And the first action, the most important action is the sign the user up action. Okay. So it's a specific action that lives under this account section of the action drop down menu. Okay, and it asks you to connect the email field with an input, the password field with an input, and then also if you should so require it, a password confirmation. Now, quick word on passwords is that they aren't actually stored in your database in a way that you can access for obvious security reasons. So whenever you need a user to change their password, you actually do it via a specific action, okay, which is called the send password reset email, okay? And that is going to predictably send the user an email with a link that they can go to to reset their password in a totally secure way. There's also a log on workflow here. We've got this all login step, okay? Which if triggered actually switches the view of the sign up login pop up so that the user sees a login screen. Okay, so we can actually switch between a sign up view and a login view. And the way that it does that is through something called custom state, which we're going to talk about in the boot camp. So don't worry about it now, but just know that that's how the sign up login pop up functions. And it also has this reset password action so that users can reset their password as I just described earlier. So let's quickly sign up as a user. All right, I'll add in my email here. Right, and now you can see that button has switched to a log out button. Okay, and that is also some built in functionality that Bubble has here. If we go to the workflows, there's two workflows here, both when that same button is clicked, this button here, only in one of them, we have a condition. If the user is logged in, then we're going to log the user out. So that's another action that's available under this account section of the action drop down menu. All right now that we've created this user, you can also see them in the database. Now, an important thing when users are logged into your app, if I go and create a notice now while I'm logged in, okay, my new notice and create that, if I then go into my app data or notices, you can see that actually this new notice has a created by field associated with the currently logged in user. And in fact, all of these, which previously, if you didn't notice previously, they didn't have a created by field because there was no users actually in the application. They are now all associated with the user who I just logged in as. So there's two things going on here. 
The first is that if your users create any objects or if there's any workflows triggered in your application while a user is logged in, right? It's, tr it's triggered within that user's session, currently logged in session, then the thing that's created, right? In our case, the notice is gonna be associated with that user. In other words, the created by field is gonna be populated with the user who is logged in when that thing or notice was created. The second thing, and this is a little bit more of a nuanced case, you're probably not gonna run into it that often, but it's important to point it out just so that it doesn't confuse you, is that if data things are being created by a logged out user, right, as was the case with these first three notices that we created earlier, and then later on within the same browser session, a user is logged in or signed up to your app, well then all of the data things that were created by the logged out user are gonna become associated with the logged in user, i.e. the created by field is gonna be filled out according to that logged in user. And by browser session, what I mean is if you know, you're know you using Chrome for an hour, in the first half hour you weren't logged in and you went around creating a whole bunch of notices, in the second half hour you decided to log in, well, all of the notices that you created in that first half hour become associated with the user account that you logged in with in the second half hour. That's of course dependent on your cookie settings, okay? Without going too far down this rabbit hole, you know, your browser cookies is what enables Bubble to know that, you know, that logged out user is probably the same as the logged in user and make that connection. So there's a few like nuances into how this works, but just so that you're aware, Bubble is doing that kind of thing intelligently behind the scenes. Right, with that out of the way, there is one last thing that I wanna talk about this week, and that is associating a list of things with another data thing. Think that sounds confusing? Well, we'll cover it in the next video.